Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to UV unwrap a hand I made and then texture paint it. Your model should be low poly like this. At the end of the video, I end up with something like this, just some subtle color, texture, roughness, and an ambient occlusion node. Okay, so starting with UV unwrapping, I'm gonna to go to the UV editing tab. I'm gonna go up here on the left and click new. I'm gonna rename it UV grid. Change the size to 2048 by 2048. Untick alpha as that relates to transparency, which we don't need. And most importantly, select the UV grid option in the generated type pulldown. Now go over to the shader editor, make sure you are in object mode and select your hand. Press Shift A to add in an image texture node. And then select your newly created UV grid image. It will likely turn gray or black like this. We will now go back to the UV editing tab and tab into edit mode. Now we will start creating some seams on our mesh to unwrap it. Press U and then select the Live Unwrap option first. Now, when I retopologize this hand, I created an edge loop that runs through all the fingers and the thumb and back over the top. So I'm just going to Alt left click this edge loop. Then I'm going to press Control E and then select Mark Seam. If you don't have this same edge loop in the topology of your hand, I would suggest just going around the fingers in a similar fashion. Now that we have laid down our seams, you're going to want to press U again on your keyboard and then select the unwrap option. Now we can see the checkerboard UV grid pattern on our mesh. You can go up here in the top left corner and click on the UV sync selection button. This makes it so that when you select faces in either window, the corresponding face in the other window will also be highlighted. This can give you a better understanding of how the 2D unwrapped mesh relates to the 3D mesh. If you aren't happy with the seam, you can remove or clear it by pressing Ctrl E and then select Clear Seam. Here I'm going to clear a small portion of the seam along the tip of the thumb like this. This gives a little bit more of an even unwrap. To better utilize the entirety of the UV map, you can go over to the left and rotate, scale, and move the 2D mesh to get some better resolution. Okay, so the UV grid looks okay now. It's a little bit stretched on the fingers, but should be good enough for my needs. So with the object retopologized and with a multi-resolution modifier applied to it, you can add in some sculpting details like wrinkles or veins or scars at this point. I'm just gonna delete the UV grid texture as we don't need it any further. Now I'm gonna apply the shrink wrap modifier. You can now go in with different sculpting brushes and sculpt in smaller details if you'd like at this point. I'm just going to use the crease brush to tighten things up a little bit and add in some smaller details with the texture bump map later. Now I'm going to go over to the Texture Paint tab to paint the base color of the hand. Make sure you are in Texture Paint mode, and then go over to the right panel, click on this button, and then select Base Color. I'm going to increase to 2048 by 2048, and then select a color.
I'm going to create a new palette to save my colors to, as this can be handy when painting. Click New, then select a color. Over in the left window, you can click here to see the 2D color map as well. You can paint in either window. Then press the little plus sign button to add it so you can quickly access the same color later should you need to. Okay, now I'm going to select a reddish color, add it to my palette, and then down to the fall off section. And on the custom shape, I'm going to pull it down like this to make the brush have softer edges. I'm also going to lower the strength a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to start painting. If the painting is slow, you can lower the subdivisions on the multi-resolution modifier to speed things up. Now it's painting time. Here I am using red over the knuckles and the fingertips. I also use yellow for areas where the bone is closer to the skin. And then a darker color of the base skin color to sort of paint in my own ambient occlusion. Once I've roughed in these colors, I use the soften brush to blur the edges a little bit. Now I'm going to use the base skin color from my palette and go over everything to lighten things up again. Now I'm using a lighter color to paint in some nails. Now I'm going to add a bump map in the same way we added the base color map. This map works in grayscale, so color doesn't matter here. White gives height and black gives depth. If you didn't already sculpt in some wrinkles and veins and whatnot, you can also do it here. Here I'm going to select a darker gray to draw in some wrinkles around the joints. You can see the effect is quite intense. To tone it down, you can go over to the shader editor or pull down a new window like this.
Then go to your newly created bump node and decrease the strength and or distance in the node. Now I'm going to add in a roughness map. This map also works in grayscale and will allow us to define shiny and flat spots. White gives flatness and black gives shine. The hand looks a little bit shiny overall, so I'm going to use the fill bucket and a lighter gray color to flatten it up. And then with a darker gray color, I will shine up the fingernails a little bit. Now for the last step, to give it a more stylized look, I'm going to add in a ambient occlusion node to the material. Going to the shader editor, Shift A and add in an ambient occlusion node. You can see it gives some subtle shadows in between the cracks and creases of the hand when it's connected directly to the color of the principal BSDF. To control this effect, you can add in a color ramp and connect it like this. Now when you move the left black handle towards the middle, the intensity of the black shadows increases. I'm going to put it near the middle. Now to mix this effect with our painted layer from before, I'm going to add in a mix RGB node. It looks a little bit too white by default. You can control the amount they mix using the factor slider here. You can see when I slide it to zero, you see nothing but the painted layer we did earlier. If you were to slide it all the way the other way, you would just see the ambient occlusion white and black. To have them mix nicer, you can change the blend mode to multiply. And now you can play with the factor slider to get the desired look. And that's it. There's a way you can UV unwrap and texture paint a hand. Thanks for watching guys. I hope it helped and see you in the next one.